Hello, I'm going to be discussing weight loss as an intervention for osteoarthritis. So is weight loss an effective strategy for osteoarthritis? Yes, it is. It can improve endurance and it can also improve mobility. So who is weight loss for? Well, for example, Monica is 61 years old. She is 1.68 meters tall and weighs 82 kilograms. She never had much use for diet or exercise. For the past three years, Monica has been suffering from increasing pain from osteoarthritis in her knees. She made a few changes to her daily routine. She has now lost weight and has found that her osteoarthritis isn't as bad as it once was. Monica also noticed an improvement in endurance and mobility. Monica visited the website and realized she should be eating better, exercising more, and might benefit from losing some weight. These results are based on individuals who were over the age of 60 who had OA of the knee for over one year. So for diet, behavioral changes to modify eating behaviors, decrease caloric intake, and goals set while maintaining a balanced diet. The overall goal is to decrease body weight by 5% over two years. For physical activity, there are four phases. The first phase is the aerobic phase, which is 15 minutes of walking. This should include 50 to 75% of the heart rate reserve. The second phase is the resistance training phase, which includes two sets of 12 repetitions performed with cuff weights on ankles and with one to one and a half minutes rest between each exercise. The exercise include leg extensions, leg curls, heel raise, and step ups. The second aerobic phase is 15 minutes of walking, and this is 50 to 75% of the heart rate reserve again. The last phase is the cool down phase, which is 15 minutes. So for physical activity, it should be performed three times a week for 18 months, and each session should be about 45 minutes. So diet and physical activity combined. Physical activity alone can be effective, but to a lesser degree. On its own, diet is effective for weight loss, but its effects on endurance and mobility are minimal. So diet and physical activity are most effective when paired together. Some recommendations for dieting are the, healthy, the heart healthy diet, Canada's food guide to eating healthy, having a diet that's low in saturated fat, a diet that has an increased omega-3 fatty acids and an increase in fiber. Some recommendations that I'll be going through are Canada's food guide to healthy eating and the space on your plate. For grain products, they include grain breads and cereals, whole wheat pasta and brown rice. Fresh fruits and vegetables are always a great choice. Choose brightly colored fruits and vegetables. For example, strawberries, sweet potatoes or spinach. Try to limit juice to half a cup per serving. Milk is a great source of calcium. Choose low fat milk and yogurt. So try to aim for milk, uh, milk fat percentage of 2% or less. Try to choose reduced fat cheese, more often 15% or less. For meats and alternatives, trim all visible fat and skin. Choose lean meats like fish and poultry. Be adventurous, try non-animal sources of protein like tofu, beans, peas, or lentils. Here is the servings according to the Canada's food guide for each of the food groups. They also provide recommendations for each group according to sex and age. For grains and starchy foods, choose an amount the size of both fists. For vegetables, choose enough vegetables that you can hold in both hands. For fruits, choose fruit that is the size of one of your fists. For proteins, choose an amount the size of the palm of your hand and the thickness of your little finger. For fat, such as butter, oil, or margarine, limit your portion to the size of the tip of your thumb. So this is the space on your plate. You'll see here that one half of the plate should be vegetables, while two thirds should be starchy foods or proteins. For fiber, meals that are high in fiber will help people feel full longer. Choose whole grain products, fruits, and vegetables each day. Look for food labels that read high or very high source of fiber. For fat, remember that portion sizes when cooking and adding fats, such as butter, margarine, salad dressing. Low in fat does not mean double portions are okay. Do not forget that flavor can also come from spices and herbs. Look for labels that read low in fat, low in saturated fat, or low or zero trans fat. 
So some tips for grocery shopping. Grocery shop with a list and plan to allow yourself enough time to complete your shopping. Try and plan meals for a week. Remember that cooking extra allows for leftovers. Avoid to do the groceries when feeling hungry. When looking at daily percentage values on labels, look at the amount of food. Read the percentage of the daily value and choose. So think of foods that have less fat, less saturated trans fat and less sodium and try to find foods that are high in fiber, vitamin A, calcium and iron. So try to compare foods that have the same amount of foods and look at their labels. Read the percentage of daily values and then make a decision. When preparing food, remember the five B's. Bake, broil, braise, barbecue and boil. These will help reduce fat. When dining out, feel empowered to ask for changes to your meal. Remember, you are the customer. Read the menu carefully. Are there hidden calories? Remember the five B's just mentioned and do not hesitate to ask for substitutions. Condiments, sauces, added fats should be placed on the side of your entree. Remember to monitor your liquid calories. Portion control. Sharing food can be fun. Some tips to eating healthy. Try to eat every four to six hours. If your next meal is more than six hours away, enjoy a snack. Avoid eating meals in front of the television or a computer. Before having a second serving at mealtime, wait 20 minutes. You may be, surpri be surprised how you feel. Remember the space on your plate. Try using smaller plates and bowls. Develop a list of non-food related rewards. A bunch of flowers, enjoy a bubble bath, a new magazine, sleep in late one morning. Small goals are great. Good luck, you can do it.